that's good news for us there. We may cool off a little bit. Also, don't forget to go to our website, knwa.com. If you haven't done so, you can download our iWarn that has all kinds of information for you right there. It plots some temperatures, which would be good to track on these hot summer days that we're seeing across the area. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, a new plan for a bypass of Wilson Park has been introduced, and this time by the residents of the neighborhood. The proposal would extend Gregg Avenue from North Street to Maple Street and would not cross the railroad, but the plan would require the moving of homes, which could create higher costs. The park bypass is part of a sales tax bond issue, which could total $165 million. Well, hog recruit Mitch Mustang and the Bulldogs apparently tore up the competition tonight in Alabama. Matt Turner has highlights a little bit later in tonight's Razorback Nation. And join us for a family tradition in tonight's Welcome to Northwest Arkansas. Northwest Arkansas News. Always. KNWA Live at 10 continues. Well, today, volunteers put the finishing touches on the last batch of pasta for the Tiny Town Grape Festival Spaghetti Dinners. And in tonight's Welcome to Northwest Arkansas, Arkansas Report, Ariana Evers introduces us to the newest member of the community joining in that long-standing family tradition. The family tradition started in Tawny Town in 1898. I think it's wonderful, and so many different ages are involved in building friendships. It's, it's fun. Irene Hafey and her husband moved from Oklahoma City to Fayetteville in March. They attend church at St. Joseph's in Tawny Town. Irene wanted to help the church organize the grape festival. Partly is to help me to get to meet these people because everybody's been real friendly. But when you get to stand and work next to them at the table, then you really get to know them. Four generations are helping prepare this year's feast. It takes a lot of people and, and a lot of work. Frances Franco has volunteered for the past 60 years. She remembers helping her mom. When my mother came up here and made spaghetti, they didn't have any machines in the beginning. They rolled it all out with a rolling pin, and then they, they cut it all by hand. Franco's grandson plans on carrying on the family tradition. And it's been going on 107 years, and, you know, I don't mean to be morbid or anything, but eventually these people aren't going to be here anymore, and we've got to keep it going. You know, we learn the techniques of how they do it, and when we grow up and have our own kids, we teach them, and we'll just keep it alive, just like they have. It's just important to keep it going. In Tawnytown, Ariana Evers, KNWA, Northwest Arkansas News. Very nice. A yeah. long-standing tradition there. I'm here for, for sports. You are here for yeah, sports. You do that that's that's what I do. Hey, your boy, uh, Matt Jones, neatly signed something that was pretty unusual. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about that coming in sports. Plus, we're going to have highlights of Mitch Mustang and the Bulldogs from Hoover, Alabama. Stick and around. A little bit later, kids have a new place to find their favorite fictional characters and a whole lot of fun. Doodles is proud to sponsor KNWA's Razorback Nation. Here is Matt Turner. As KNWA first told you last night, Springdale offensive lineman Bartley Webb will not be a Razorback. And today, Bo Mattingly has learned Webb will commit to Notre Dame sometime in August. Now, as for his teammates, none have committed. They're all in Hoover, Alabama tonight for the Elite 7-on-7 seven seven tournament. KNWA traveling with the team, bringing you highlights. Springdale facing Captain High out of Shreveport in the first game. Mitch Mustaine was just on fire. First touchdown to fellow hog recruit Andrew Norman. Then he's got another deep ball, this time to Damian Williams. Nice grab there, steals it away, and Springdale is rolling. D. Williams was covered up after that, so Mitch, the big man on campus, goes back to Norman. That's the out route in the end zone. Then he goes to the fade again. You just can't stop it, and the Red Dogs made believers out of Captain High tonight, blowing them out 33-0, to zero, not even breaking a sweat in the process. Gus Malzahn's team played two more after that. They got two more wins, taking care of Glade Central Florida. They're a powerhouse in that state. They also beat up on South Carolina Fairfield 30-16 to in pool play. The actual tournament, though, starts tomorrow night. Last night, another hog recruit, Cody Burns, showed out at the Top Gun Quarterback Challenge. The Northside QB didn't actually win the competition, but he sure did show off his hose here. Threw it 74 yards, 
best I've ever seen in person, better than a lot of NFL quarterbacks. And afterwards, the teenager was treated like a rock star. You're not even a junior in high school yet, and you're signing autographs and taking pictures. What's the deal with that? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, a lot of kids want my autograph. I don't know why. I'm pretty good, but I don't know about that good. I mean, I, I am appreciative that they're doing that for me. I mean, it makes you feel good. Well, I bet Cody's never signed a jock strap, but Matt Jones has, and now it's for sale. I'm not kidding either. MJ autographed jock strap on eBay right now. You can get it. 350 bucks is the asking price. So far, though, the only bid is for, for one cent. Still don't know if that's a new jock or uh, a game-tested ah. item. Yeah, we don't, ah. we don't know about that. Kenoa Kennedy may be signing something also pretty soon, like a contract with the Lions. The former Hogs a starter in Denver, but he's being courted heavily, and he's going to meet with the Detroit management sometime next week. Kyle Hancock still waiting to meet with the Rockies, but he was on Arkansas's campus today enrolling in school. At last check, Colorado's final offer was close to $600,000. Kyle doesn't have to make a decision, though, until he starts his very first class in Fayetteville. Nolan Richardson also has a big decision to make. El Paso Times is reporting he's been offered a job to coach the Panamanian national team. If he does this, the move would reunite him with former hog Dionisio Gomez, but still no word on if Nolan will accept. Checking the first round of the U.S. Bank Championship actually delayed in Milwaukee today. Ben Crane's your leader. Little Rock's Glenn Day way back at plus one. Former Hawk Brendan Pappas is going to start his round tomorrow. And tomorrow's a big day for Jermaine Taylor. A victory parade starts at 11 in Little Rock. But today he was back on ESPN talking about his opponent, Bernard Hopkins. Bernard, man, stop crying. Okay, first of all, you're too old for it. And, um, man, I, I'm the new champ. Get over it. Do better in the rematch because that's what I would do. There you go, Jermaine. Big League Baseball, cards trailing Milwaukee 8-3 in the fifth. Albert Pujols drives in a run. But it's not enough, and St. Louis goes down 12-7, the final score. Final stage of the Tour de France is just three days away, and Lance Armstrong still has a huge lead. Closest threat, almost three minutes behind Lance Armstrong, so it looks like he's going to get his seventh Tour de France victory, and then he's going to retire after that and hang out with Cheryl Crow. Talk about Yeah, that's a pretty good life, out. don't you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Back. All right. Yeah. You think so? Yeah, you can't stop him. Don's predicting a comeback. We're going to check in with meteorologist Jason Paul Dollard when we get back. Yeah, and a new children's librarian, Rogers, has kids and parents looking forward to story time. Tomorrow on KMWA Today. Well, it took a year and a half to build and 75,000 Legos. We'll show you the end result. And it's going to be continued steamy around the area. We'll tell you about that. Plus, we'll have another chance for a fun getaway in Hot Springs for you. That and much more tomorrow morning. All right, Legos. guys. <laughs> the new children's library opened this week in Rogers. The addition part of a $3 million expansion to the main Rogers library. And kids will find everything from a story time room to computer terminals. The library will also offer more in the way of after school programs. We're going to offer them a new story time called Cyber Stories. They have our homework help center to look forward to attending. And while those children are doing that, their younger siblings are going to be able to attend preschool story time on Tuesday afternoons. So we'll be able to do programming for two different age groups at one time. The official grand opening is actually August 6th, but you can check it out now. It's going to be warm then. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. I think the best place to be would be inside that library, maybe reading uh, Dr. Seuss, Clifford the Big Red Dog, Berenstain Bears. Those are some of my favorite kids' books. But uh, Kids? Still reading those things, man. <laughs> there you go. It takes a long time. <laughs> Here's a look at your weekend forecast. As we just said, inside is where it's at, or at a lake or a pool. High temperatures in the upper 90s, and not a whole lot of showers or storms. All Thank right. You, sir. Appreciate That's that. it.